Hey everyone, in this episode we're building foundation French frames. Let me show you how we do it. Hey everyone, so today we begin uh, the next steps in the uh, the next stage in the foundation uh, uh, work. So this morning we got up really early, we went, we got a U-Haul because we had all these materials that we wanted to bring and start working on. Uh, our next priority, and you will see uh, the next videos, they are going to overlap over uh, with each other because we're going to be doing multiple things at the same time. So our priority would have been to do insulation, but we're still waiting for the insulation. We actually ordered it like uh, three weeks ago. It, should, it's suppo it was supposed to arrive today. It hasn't, so uh, hopefully it will arrive soon. Though. So in order to save some time, we're going to be working on uh, French drains. So the next, for French drains, what we've brought is we have um, 12 foot rolls of geotextile fabric. And uh, I will explain, we will explain that when we get to, to it on the French frames. We also stopped by Lowe's and uh, we purchased uh, 48 sticks of 10 foot long, um, three inch PVC uh, schedule 45. Uh, we were hoping they would be perforated, but for whatever reason, the material shortages, uh, we couldn't find it. So we're gonna have to drill the holes ourselves. Oh yeah, and finally, you will probably see me dressed this way for a long time. And that's mostly because uh, I only want to destroy one set of clothes. So, sorry for the fashion police. French drain is to divert water from the footings. So when it rains, when it snows, it melts, everything will be coming down uh, the, the soil and it's going to start accumulating in here. So with the French drains, what we do is we have a pipe and we are drilling holes every eight inches. This will be facing down. And on top we have uh, holes at 120 degrees every 16 inches. So today it's a pretty boring day, it's not difficult, but we're going to be drilling I don't know how many holes. Um, curious fact about the, the French drain, it's actually not French. What happens is the inventor's last name was French, so that's why we call them the French drain. for the cross rock, we decided to lay out all the pipe for the French and Radon and I lay out all the fittings where they need to go. So let me give you a walkthrough. Our excavator had an amazing idea where he suggested we connect the uh, Radon mitigation to our French frames. So what is the what is radon? Radon is a radioactive gas that emits from the earth pretty much everywhere, but particularly in the mountains. So by code, we need to protect the air within the house against this gas. Uh, so here you can see all the network of French frames coming in from the main house, the tiny house. They interconnect and then they go through the main retainer wall. Uh, and then here you can see this pipe. This is serving as a dual purpose. This will be. Uh, 
French rain within the uh, slab, under the slab of the main house, but it will also be soaking air for radon mitigation. So um, that was a great idea from our excavator. So finally our gravel has arrived and with that our uh, priorities have changed. So now our top priority is to fill the first two inches below the French drains before putting the geotextile. So let's get to work. Now that we have received the uh, gravel, we have begun placing about a foot uh, worth of gravel right next to the footings and about two inches high. Uh, we are making sure the slope of the pipe is away from the house. Uh, we are also stumping the gravel uh, such that it has uh, solid ground. And when we put additional weight on it, it doesn't buckle or shift or move away uh, the angle from the house. Um, you will also notice I have placed a little trail here uh, of rocks. It is acting a, as a little, as a dam of sorts for the gravel when we put the uh, geotextile so that it holds it and it keeps it tight. Otherwise it will just spill over uh, when we build the burrito. So this is the geotextile fabric for the French drain. This was specified by our soil engineer. So um, think of this as a burrito. This is going to be the tortilla and you put it the, against the footing and then you fill it with gravel then the pipe goes in the middle covered with more gravel and then you close the burrito with more of this fabric so um, what this one does is it's going to prevent any of the soil from getting through but it allows the water to go through so the the um, the holes on the pipe are not going to get clogged but the water will be able to get out now very important this is called non-woven geotextile fabric this one is at least four ounces uh, thick now, don't confuse this with the regular landscaping uh, fabric because that one allows the soil to go through and it would, it would clog the, the, um, the holes and it would be pretty much useless. So our burrito is starting to take shape. We have the pipe, we have covered it with crushed rock and here's the geotextile. So then we're going to just cover it like this and the geotextile is going to extend all the way to the stem wall to provide a path for water to drain. So what you see here is uh, uh, our exit to daylight. The house is approximately 65 foot long. And uh, so we have one exit to daylight about every 30 feet. Some of these exits are slightly redundant to each other should, someone, should one of them fail. Uh, the pipe here is not perforated. So for that reason, we won't need to put cross rock or geotextile fabric. Uh, the term to daylight means that the end of the pipe is visible from the outside, so in other words, sun can shine on it. Um, so at the end of it, we will be putting a cap like this. So this cap will allow water out, but it will prevent any kind of animal, rodent or whatever from uh, making a shelter within the pipes.
So it's a week later after uh, taking our three week uh, vacation to work on the house. Uh, we did finish the waterproofing. We got about 60% of the um, uh, French rains. Some materials got delayed, so uh, what can we do? Uh, as you can see, the weather is actually super nice. It's actually December 3rd and uh, we haven't gotten any snow, so it's kind of surprising, uh, but uh, we gotta take advantage uh, of this. At least myself, because Marcela is actually on vacation in Mexico. So yeah, today I'm by, here by myself. Um, so, as you can see, I've been able to knock a little uh, chunks out of this pile of uh, crushed rock uh, using the wheelbarrow. It is a massive amount of effort to wheelbarrow everything around. Uh, particularly here in the mountains, so um, I highly, highly recommend that you rent an excavator. Um, at Home Depot, you can rent it for like 11 to 1200 dollars a week or so. You can check it out uh, versus uh, 350 or so dollars per day. So it definitely makes sense to rent it uh, an entire week. We considered doing it, except. Um, our excavator delivers at the cross rock like um, less than a week before the end of our vacation so at that point in time we just decided to wheelbarrow it and uh, we had some things to do so it is what it is um, but yeah uh, here I am one week later and uh, I'll be trying to knock these uh, French trains uh, this weekend. So with the front of the house, uh, French rains complete. Uh, I have begun laying the uh, back of the house. As you can see, we have about a, a foot or plus of uh, cross rock. And I have placed um, this cross rock around the entire perimeter of the house. You can also see my stumper here. I have also stumped this cross rock to make sure it is nice and compacted. So when I put the uh, pipes on, uh, they will be laying on solid ground. Um, here also you can see three of my four most used tools when doing this work manually. Um, so as you can see here we have a lot of rock and dirt and mostly rock. So using the shovel to try to dig here is absolutely impossible. The shovel will probably go in like half an inch and that's as, as far as uh, you'll, you'll go. So what I end up doing is I have a miner's pike or peak, whatever the name is, and that allows me to soften the earth and then I use the rake to pull the dirt and then the nice thing about it is that it sometimes grabs onto uh, rocks. So when you're pulling it actually pulls them out of the ground and uh, you can dig a, a lot of uh, a deep hole uh, using this method. See this? This actually for the next episode, so stay tuned. Can you believe we're actually in December? Um, we're in zone 7 in December and it is actually like 50s, uh, 40s. So it is pretty warm given, given the circumstances, which makes me kind of happy at the moment. Uh, yeah, so here's the uh, geotextile fabric. So my plan for tomorrow is to cut it, make sure I have enough for the entire back of the perimeter of the house that you're seeing right now. Um, after that, I will be placing the pipes, making sure that their slope is diverting water from the high ground, the back of the house, to the front of the house where, um, where the uh, exits to daylight are. It's about a week later and uh, Marcela is back. Hi! <laughs> So as you know, I didn't finish the French range because I didn't want her to feel uh, left out or um, miss out on the experience. So today we are here to finish up the French range and uh, yeah, so this should be good. As you can tell, wind is the name of the game. How kind of game. And with that, we're done with the French range. That was a massive amount of effort. The only last thing we will do is when the excavator comes in and fills the dirt in, I will request that he adds an additional layer of uh, crushed rock on top of the drains, and that will be it. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. That will help us grow our channel. And uh, see you in the next one. Bye.